when will the Starship Human Landing System be ready? This is the burning question for aerospace fans since SpaceX was selected for the Artemis 3 mission. Surprisingly, the answer may have been right in front of us all along at the Starbase production site. Though most of us, myself included, hadn't focused on it until now, recent updates have revealed exciting details about the interior design within this specially modified nose cone. These designs give us a glimpse into how astronauts will live on their journey to the moon. So, just how remarkable are these designs, and what comes next? Let's explore it all on today's episode of Great SpaceX. With Artemis 3 less than two years away, the world is eagerly anticipating humanity's return to the moon. Alongside Starship's development, the unveiling of Starship HLS is highly awaited. This nose cone featuring a unique design has been stationed at the production site for quite some time. Although work on it hasn't been conducted behind the scenes, which has led to waning attention, recent leaks on X have reignited interest. Intriguingly, sources have provided a glimpse into the crew accommodations within the Starship HLS nose cone. And right as I was preparing this video, the Space Engineer team released a 3D model of the interior layout, bringing my descriptions to life. Huge thanks to the Space Engineer team for crafting such a detailed visual. Make sure to follow them on X and subscribe to their YouTube channel to support their work on future projects. Now, let's break down the design. According to the images and leaks from other contributors, including Tom Bickmore, who shared that he had been inside the nose cone, the crew quarters are divided into two primary decks. The upper deck will serve as the main workspace and private quarters. Current plans show five bedrooms for astronauts arranged with a layout inspired by the ISS, but with a horizontal orientation to offer a more familiar living and working environment. With a clever domino layout, SpaceX can even expand each ship ring to accommodate up to 20 bedrooms, showcasing the Starship HLS's impressive capacity for a large astronaut crew. Adjacent to the crew bedrooms is the central control room, which will feature four seats similar to those in the Crew Dragon, complete with a touch screen to oversee and control the entire system. Besides the standard control screens, large wall displays will serve as virtual windows, promising astronauts an unparalleled visual experience. On this same upper deck, other essential subsystems are housed, including the life support outlet, storage rack, shoe cover storage, and system switchboard. There's also an emergency exit for added safety. The lower deck is slightly smaller and will primarily serve as storage for life support equipment, specifically the Environmental Control and Life Support System, or ECLSS, and will include critical components like the heat exchange system. This area is also likely to store research gear, lunar rovers, and supplies such as food and water. Although not yet confirmed, it's expected that the lower deck will also house the restroom facilities. The deck's flooring has a curved design shaped by the pressure vessel dome, but it will be optimized to ensure smooth movement for the crew. Connecting the two decks is a functional 15-step staircase, offering astronauts seamless movement between levels within the Starship's interior. The upper deck boasts an awe-inspiring 40-foot ceiling, giving astronauts an open, spacious area to adjust to the moon's lower gravity before stepping onto the surface. This expansive space is not only visually captivating, but also serves as a training environment where astronauts can familiarize themselves with the unique conditions they'll face on the lunar landscape. While this 3D model provides an exciting glimpse into the design, it doesn't capture every operational detail. Fortunately, recent updates offer insights into the airlock corridor, a crucial component equipped with integrated control panels to manage essential systems. These panels ensure everything is set for lunar operations before astronauts exit the spacecraft. The main hatch in this corridor is expected to connect with a specially designed elevator system, which SpaceX has rigorously tested. This elevator will safely transport astronauts from the crew area, positioned a remarkable 50 meters above ground, down to the lunar surface, simplifying their descent. 
These recent updates are just the beginning, with more impressive details likely to emerge as the Artemis 3 launch approaches. Starbase has become the focal point of a quiet revolution in space exploration, unveiling advancements that continuously push the boundaries of what's possible. Every new revelation offers us a deeper look into SpaceX's commitment to making lunar missions more accessible and efficient. If you could describe these developments in one word, what would it be? Let me know your thoughts in the comments section down below, and as always, like, share, and subscribe to stay updated on SpaceX's incredible journey into the next era of space exploration. Beyond the intricate nose cone section, undoubtedly the most complex and mission-critical part of the Starship HLS, SpaceX is making significant headway on the rest of the vehicle, which includes the fuel tanks and engines. These essential components will span about 30 to 35 meters of the spacecraft. Like the nose cone, HLS's exterior materials will diverge from the standard Starship design, as it will not feature flaps or heat shields due to its lack of atmospheric reentry. Currently, two design concepts for Starship HLS are under development. One concept features foldable landing legs, an enlarged crew compartment, and aft-mounted solar panels that will deploy in a propeller-like configuration. The second concept opts for fixed landing legs and body-mounted solar panels that will extend in multiple directions, alongside adjusted thrusters. While none of this specialized hardware has appeared at Starbase, it's likely that some of these components are being assembled at a separate, more confidential facility, much like the nose cone. The final iteration of Starship HLS will probably follow the V2 model design that's presently under production. This continuity could mean a preliminary launch to test systems, particularly the fuel transfer mechanism, which is essential since Starship HLS will require mid-mission refueling to reach the moon. So when will it all come together? SpaceX still has two V-1 vehicles in the pipeline, though only one more V-1 flight, likely with S-31 and B-13, is expected before year-end. Following this, V-2 is anticipated to take flight early next year. This suggests that the first Starship HLS could make its debut around mid-next year. A crucial milestone will be the complete assembly of Starship HLS hardware. Once all the components are in place, assembly should be swift. V2, for instance, took only about six weeks. Following assembly, SpaceX plans to move forward with an uncrewed test flight, currently slated for late 2025 or early 2026. In parallel with vehicle development, SpaceX is pushing forward with essential infrastructure projects. They are expected to expedite the launch pad build in Florida, where NASA will manage Starship HLS's launch. Another priority is the orbital refueling infrastructure, with potential test operations beginning by March next year. If these systems are successfully tested, they will be ready for uncrewed test flights and subsequent operational missions, establishing a robust foundation for lunar missions and beyond. These advancements signal SpaceX's focused commitment to turning Starship HLS from concept to reality. As they approach crucial milestones, each successful step brings humanity closer to an extraordinary era of space exploration. SpaceX's recent achievements and strategic plans provide a reassuring perspective on the timeline for Artemis 3, alleviating previous concerns about potential delays. Just months ago, skepticism surrounded Starship's readiness for the mission, particularly since Super Heavy had yet to complete a controlled landing and Starship itself had not undergone re-entry testing. However, SpaceX has made remarkable strides in a short period. Super Heavy successfully achieved a controlled ocean landing and followed that with a successful landing utilizing the Megazilla arm. Meanwhile, Starship accomplished a controlled vertical landing on only its second flight showcasing significant progress. These key milestones set the stage for both stages of the rocket to land with the Mechazilla arm early next year. Perfecting this landing technique is vital for the lunar landing capabilities of Starship HLS. Furthermore, successful landing with Mechazilla will facilitate rapid, repeated launches, an essential component for the ongoing deployment of Starship HLS and Starship tankers for future missions.
While most major developments are slated for next year, one particularly noteworthy event is the upcoming Flight 6. Its success could serve as a critical turning point, unlocking the subsequent phases of testing and development. This flight holds the potential to propel SpaceX onto an accelerated trajectory toward the moon, making it more than just another Starship mission. It represents a pivotal moment in SpaceX's journey, reinforcing their commitment to pushing the boundaries of space exploration and solidifying their role in the Artemis program. Though challenges undoubtedly lie ahead for SpaceX and Starship, the current progress is promising. With the newly revealed design of Starship HLS's interior, we now have a clearer picture of the environment astronauts will call home on their journey. There's still much to accomplish and many updates to come, but for now, we can confidently say, hey moon, we're coming. Well, folks, that's about it for today's episode. Thank you so much for tuning in. And as always, this has been Kevin from Great SpaceX. Until next time, keep looking up.